presenting tonight's screening. We have the filmmaker who's going to come down. And Angad is here from Toronto. And uh, I'd like to introduce him. It's his first film. It's an amazing film. You guys are all lucky to be watching it here. And I'm glad you're here. And he's Angad. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys all for coming out and uh, sharing your Friday night in Montreal with me. Yeah, it wasn't, it's, you know, it wasn't an easy uh, film to uh, fund, as much fun as it was, because, and, and I, I, I have rehearsed this a little bit, you know, it's a, it's, it's a film, you know, about this dream house, but I was like, the dream house isn't gonna get built, like, I can't, I can't give you that, and then I was like, but it's also a film about prisons, but also we don't have any access to the prison, we're not gonna show you the prison, you're not gonna go in the prison, they were like, and I was like, but don't worry, it's actually really, it's a film about this relationship. It's these two people, but you're actually not going to see them together. And you're not even going to see one of them at all. So it wasn't easy, but um, you saw like at the end, and thanks for staying through those long credits, there are all these different groups who came in and who, who believed in the film. Um, you know, the Sundance Institute, the Ford Foundation, the Ontario Arts Council, thank you to, you know, Ontario taxpayers if you're here. Um, but it was a lot of foundations, you know, we weren't able to get the, uh, the normal, uh, the broadcasters on board while we were making it. Now that it's made, they love it. And, and you know, they're like, yeah, we'll take it, but, you know, we didn't, we needed the money then. But, I mean, it's still good that they're taking it, but. So, you know, I think, like, you know, there's a t-shirt uh, that a friend of mine has that's better than this one, which is all the easy films have been made, and, and I think that's true. So I, I don't think, you know, the film being hard to make is a reason not to make it. I think it's, you know, it's also what gives it, you know, what's good about it. Um, but yeah, I have a great production team who are not here. Lisa and Ed at Storyline who did a lot of that work raising the money, and it, it took a long time too, so it wasn't... You know, it wasn't an easy thing to just get done right away. Yeah, no, I, I um, so the first question, uh, in terms of how long we've been shooting, the first thing we shot was uh, in the summer of 2007. Um, so that's, you know, four, five years ago, over five years ago now. Um, and basically, if you look at it in real time, um, we basically shot the stuff that happens ended um, in early 2009 um, in terms of the different developments with his case and stuff. Now, we did do like some pickup shoots after that, but it wasn't like real time stuff. It was really like, oh, she didn't, we need somebody talking about this, so we went and had them do it. But, you know, all the things that are actually happening on screen ended by then. Um, and yeah, it did not have an ending for the film. I didn't know what necessarily was going to be the ending or what I was getting into. Um, but at the same time, there was a point in the process uh, where I knew the house wasn't going to be realized in that way that, you know, they had imagined it, and maybe it still will. And I realized, and, and I knew the legal process I have no control over. Um, so at that point, I realized, okay, well, we just have to make the film and get it out, because you know, you're right. I mean, the point is, there's, you never know when the story is still going. But in that same way, the story is still going, like, you guys are now part of that story for me. Like, now you guys know about it, and you can help write, hopefully, like, a much more interesting ending where Herman gets out and the house is built. And, and you know, so, like, you know, then, so please, you know, uh, my friend Stefan is standing uh, by the exit with the sign-up sheet, and then there's also Facebook and Twitter and all the rest. Um, so yeah, I mean, at a certain point, then it was a race, then, you know, once I realized the house wasn't going to it was like a race to get the money, so I, cause I just was like, we have to get this out, because it could have, you know, and it has already had in, an impact in terms of, you know, the amount of awareness it's been raising around what's happening in, in the U.S. prisons. Um, so, in terms of this, the, how I got in touch with the story was, uh, I knew Jackie before, well before I had uh, thought to make a film 
about her project or, or and, and her friendship with Herman. Um, we were friends, you know, had done some political work together, or just, you know, we knew each other, and I knew about the project, but I didn't necessarily think it was a film. And what would change things in my mind is um, she had been at a gallery in Germany and had shown it, had shown the exhibit, and at the same time had put out a book of letters between Herman and her edited letter. I mean, not all the letters, they wrote thousands of letters to each other, but an edited version of that. And when I read it, I was like, oh, this is actually could be a really cool story. This, it's like the making of the art project is actually, to me, in some ways, more interesting than, or at least as interesting as the art project itself, which is great. You know, and then, so then through Jackie, I had my first phone call with Herman, and I basically knew right away that we were not going to get access to videotape him in the prison. I mean, he's not someone that prison is like happy about people knowing about, you know, she's not a cause, you know, a cause that they want to highlight in any way. So, um, but when I spoke to him on the phone, I realized he, he could, he has a real presence and we could make this film without showing him, we could make this film just with, with his phone calls. And uh, so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. Uh, I think, um, you know, there were there were various reactions. I mean, I don't think there was one, you know, there was one like neighborhood reaction. I think, you know, there are on the one hand, and, and one of the reactions I actually put in the film is somebody who's like, "What the hell? Is, like, why are we doing? It? You know, like this guy should be in prison because that's a very valid reaction in terms of of what, you know, the people, the views people have of the prisoners. I think. More of the reactions, and maybe that's because she never got to construction, didn't even were, were about Herman and his situation and the prison system and like people's reactions to the prison system than what you're asking, which is like the actual idea of the community center. But I never, I don't think that got real enough that it elicited reactions. But there were people who we interviewed who were like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I have a brother in prison that's so messed up, why, you know, we should, this is great that you're like trying to do this. And then there are people like the guy who you saw in the film who was, was like, you know, why are you, like this, this is ridiculous, like, people know that what they're doing is wrong. And, you know, I think that's, you know, that's the, the spectrum. And for me it was more important to show that guy because that's, that, that's the majority, you know, that's, that's, that, there's a lot more people like that. Right? That, that's why we, we've allowed, at least in America, and now unfortunately in Canada too, the prison system to expand. Because there's enough people who think like that. That like, yeah, it's all bad people. And, you know. So it was important for me to include that voice. But nobody got to the point of reacting to the community center. And that was something that would have been awesome. If that, you know, that was something I was hoping to get in a film, but didn't, you know, never, never got that close. Yeah, she's still she's still working on it. Um, you can link to, you can go to her website, which is very easy, hermanshouse.org, and it's also um, linkable from her website, which is hermanshousethefilm.com. I think, um, like any like massive undertaking, which is also a film, it, it, there are ebbs, it ebbs and flows in terms of her energy and excitement, and you know, it, it's definitely looking for for support. Huge number of working versions. That's kind of documentaries are like made on the edit table. This one definitely was. Um, we had this amazing experience. Um, if any of you are aspiring filmmakers, try to make them. Don't give up. And and, and the Sundance Institute um, has a lab where they take films and they with that are not done and kind of have all these editors look at it and you get a whole new view of the same film. I mean, it's still the same film we went in with, but it changed. So, I think the biggest change for us, I mean, the biggest surprise for me was I thought, oh, it's gonna be really 
hard to like make a film where you don't see your protagonist. So we were really trying to like bring Herman to life and bring him to, to make him real. And then when we were editing and showing the cuts, we realized actually Jackie's story is as interesting, if not as complicated, and that's like we weren't paying as much attention to her. When in, in a sense, you know, she goes through this remarkable journey that we didn't really realize until we kind of, you know, really, really got into it. Um, but, it, you know, at first it just, we just thought that making, you know, let's, let's, we have the hardest character is going to be showing her. But actually that wasn't the case when we started editing it. And one of the surprises, it wasn't a surprise, but we didn't even, like, out of that lab, we realized that this, the, the actuality that Jackie moved to New Orleans and bought a house and was like, kind of trying to help the neighborhood kids was actually like a really powerful kind of metaphor that we had totally missed in our first edit. So, uh, so you know, that's the editing and editing advisors and, you know, showing your cuts around. If you don't get into the Sundance Labs, there are other great people to show it to. But we were, you know, we were really fortunate. No, uh, no political or any, no, no good reason, no real reason, if that makes sense. It was really just a, um, and we had lots of interviews with Albert, and they're just as fascinating. It, it was just a creative decision. Um, one of the early decisions we made, you know, was not to show Herman, um, like not to show photos of him and stuff. And so then there was just like a real like. Like, how do you differentiate? Then you have like two disembodied voices. Like, once we made that decision, showing Albert became a lot more difficult, despite the fact he had amazing things to say and ideas. Um, because how would you, you know, it would have been really hard to like distinguish. They would have to have like different styles of animation. I don't know, Nicola would have had to like do something, you know, it would have been very difficult. Um, but yeah, and, and that was one of the reasons. And then, I mean, that he's not as involved in the house project, you know, he's not involved in that aspect of it, but he's still very much involved in the campaign, um, obviously to free himself, but also to kind of end the, the solitary system as it is in America. Um, so yeah, there's no, you know, it was, you know, there should be another film made about Albert, and, you know, I would support it, but it just didn't make sense. Um, I mean, I think they're, they are part of the reality, so, you know, it wasn't necessarily, it, it was in part a way of highlighting things, because I think, you know, that this, this is kind of like an odd couple friendship, right, like, so that, that is by definition what, you know, is going to be accentuated, that people with really different experiences and really different backgrounds can, can find, like, like can create this real friendship. So I think just by that nature, you're going to see that. But, you know, certain things we did, you know, want to emphasize, like, you know, like the kind of house that she grew up in versus the kind of houses in New Orleans and, and things like that, um, just to, you know, locate the two of them as much as possible. Um, and we're doing a lot of work with the film to raise awareness about solitary throughout the country. And there's solitary in Canada, too, and a vast, you know, a disproportionate number in, in the U.S. it's like 70%, whatever the stats they have, of suicides in prison are the people who are kept in solitary. And the same thing happens in Canada in terms of uh, the, just the people who are committing suicide and have melt, mental illness. Um, we've, we've teamed up with um, the American Civil Liberties Union in the U.S. and they're actually showing the film at state legislatures around the, around the country to try to talk to get bills passed um, to reduce solitary, but you know, definitely we should do that here too. If, if, if those are issues that people are excited about, and you can contact me, um, sign up on our email list, and uh, yeah, we'd love to have the film screened as much as possible. Thank you.